Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. And in this video, we're gonna be giving you an interface overview of Figma. So if you've never opened it, you open it and you're kind of scared, where is this, where is that? You're gonna learn all of that stuff in this video as we basically drill down the foundations of Figma. Okay, so here we have our file browser, and this is sort of sort of like home base for Figma, right? Sort of everywhere you're gonna go sort of starts from here. For instance, if you wanted to import a file, whether it's a .fig, which is a Figma file, or a sketch file, you would come here and select this import file, or you could simply just drag it onto the canvas. Now, in addition, we also have our recent files that we have here. We also have our drafts, deleted files in search where you can find new files all here. We have a menu button, which uh, you can get to pretty much all of this menu button stuff from your actual OS X or uh, Mac OS file menu up top like normal. If you don't have that, this is a great way to access all of the sort of stuff anyways. You can see we have access to a lot of the stuff we have already. New file, import file, new project. And help in tutorials is a great place to head if you want to hear a familiar voice. Uh, I do a couple of the videos over there. So if you'd like to check out and get some more help on some different concepts of Figma, click help and tutorials. You can see their official videos, which I must say are very, very nice. Uh, next, we can do things like sign out, account settings, that sort of stuff. Now you, of course, will have some onboarding windows here. We're gonna simply ignore most of that. I'm gonna click through, because I'm gonna tell you about that anyways. Uh, you can see we can also create a team down here in the bottom left, and we'll talk about team management stuff. Okay, so this is just your file browser. Let's actually get into a real Figma file here and check it out. Now, one of the files you're given by default at the time of recording this is this Google Material Design file. Let's go ahead and open this one. If you have any other particular files in here and you don't have this one, just open any of them. It's more about getting to the canvas and interface itself rather than anything else. And here we have the main Figma sort of design window. Now, this window is basically very familiar, or at least it should be in some respects, because it's gonna be a lot like other design applications you've worked in, and if you're coming from Sketch, things are gonna probably feel a little bit familiar, although different. For instance, on the left, we have all of our layers, which is uh, basically where you'd find your layers in many other design applications. We have the eye in the lock, where we can turn off visibility on layers, or we can click the lock to lock layers. So we'll be talking talking more about sort of using this stuff. But as you can see, we can open up our layers and our groups and get down to it. So over here is your layers, where probably you would expect them to be. Now next we have this toolbar right here. We're gonna have access to all of our tools. For instance, the first tool selected is the move tool, which is a standard cursor, right? Uh, I'm gonna zoom in here so we can actually see a little bit more of this stuff. As you can see, I can click in and move this around, right? So that's the move tool. Now, if we click this drop down, we actually have access to the scale tool, which is also a keyboard shortcut of K. It allows you to scale things in a way that are proportionate. Now, next we have the frame tool, which is where you create frames. And sketches are called artboards and Illustrator. I'm not exactly sure what they're called, but they're basically a little miniature canvas within your larger canvas that contains your design. And we're gonna be talking a lot about frames as we go, because they're a major concept and something that you use all the time. In addition, in the drop-down menu, you can see that the frame tool shortcut is F, and the slice tool, which is hidden in here, shortcut is just simply the S key. Now, slices work the same way you'd expect as any other design application, where you can click and drag and create an area to be exported, right? So the slice is something that you would then export. Although, um, I must say that the exporting features in Figma are really great, that you don't necessarily use the slice tool that often, but it's there if you'd like it. Now next we have our shapes. You can see this drop down. we have R for rectangle tool, L for line tool, we have shift L for the uh, arrow tool, we have an ellipse tool with the, the O key, the polygon tool, which is triangles and uh, all sorts of other polygons, the star tool and the place image tool. We're gonna be going over these in more specifics when we talk about just creating shapes in general. Next, we have the vector tool, which is a really nice vector tool. It's a, basically a pen tool from Illustrator where you can create your own vector shapes 
And there are some excellent features with this pen tool that really make it stand out above the others, but we'll be dedicating a whole video to those. Now next we have the text tool where the keyboard shortcut is T and you can click and drag and create text boxes. Next we have the team library which will open up all of the shared components with your team. You'll notice that you have to have a professional team to be able to use the team library, but it is definitely a great feature for all of you teams. We're going to be going over the specifics of that too in a team section of this. Now next we have comments is a way that you can leave comments on your design for other editors or viewers to check out and see your comments. Maybe comment on them, tell them, give them your thoughts, which actually makes Figma a really nice tool for design reviews. There's some other features involving design reviews too that we're going to talk about that just really set Figma apart from its competition. Okay, next we have the uh, title of our file, which you can see version history. Now, I believe you don't get version history with the uh, free account, or at least not a major one. You, you can see I get a 30-day history. And if you have the professional account, you'll get unlimited version history. Now, let's actually select something here. I'm just going to select the layer at random, and you can see we get a whole host of other tools that pop up in the middle. Now these tools are tools for the selected item specifically. You can see edit object, reset instance, which is useful when we're talking about components. We have create component, which we're gonna go over at length because it's a key feature in Figma. We have uses mask, which allows us to do some masking stuff. Uh, we have union selection, which is sort of our operators for working with multiple shapes and then we have a crop image tool okay next we have how many users are viewing the document right now i'm the only viewer using this document so my face is right here if there were others they would be popping up along here as well Share is where you can share access to your document. Like you can give someone access to a document via a link to edit, or maybe you can add someone via email to edit, all sorts of different stuff here. We'll be going over this stuff at length because document sharing in Figma is something that's one of the key features again is this collaboration. Now, next we have this presentation view, which is basically going to show off our frames and sort of a shareable different view here that you can actually click through uh, and go through like a presentation. And there's also some really excellent prototyping features that go along with this where you can actually create hotspots on these and then maybe drive a, a client presentation. Again, these are all things that are going to be covered at length in their own videos because they are really, really excellent features. So you can basically do all your design work in Figma, create these hotspots and click through them, and then your entire audience can browse to this file on the live web version and they can basically let you drive and show off your design. So, I mean, it's a great way for not only design presentations, but also design reviews internally. Next, we have view settings where you can see a pixel preview, show pixel grid, snap to pixel grid, show layout grids, uh, multiplayer cursors. So if you have multiple people on this, if you see multiple cursors like a Google Doc, and then we have our default zoom level, our current zoom level. And then we have the sort of export publish tool, which uh, I don't use much, but I'll be showing you how to use it. Now next in the right column here is basically where we have all of our info. If you've used Sketch, you'd be familiar with this very same concept. Basically, you select anything. Let me just select an item here and we get a whole bunch of information about it, like the fill color, uh, the layer properties, the position coordinates, the alignment tools. We have things like stroke and we can add a drop shadow. And we can do actually a lot more than that once we start getting into some of these features about where we're using things like constraints to pin an object to different positions. So when you're modifying things, like let's say we want to make something like this color, a different color, we'll just select this, the fill, and you can see this is where we're going to be going to modify whatever we have selected. You also notice we have a couple other tabs here, prototype and code. Prototype mode is for connecting frames together to build interactive prototypes. We talked about that briefly in the presentation view where you can create hotspots. We're going to be going over that at length. And then we also have the code tab where you can actually collect real CSS code. If we click this code tab here, you can 
copy this background color directly from Figma, saving you a little bit of time there. Super cool. Okay, and lastly, we just have our general canvas, which is right here. And this canvas, like other design applications, can get sort of as big or as small as you want it to. And as you can see, because this is a vector app, we can keep zooming out or in and our lines are going to redraw nice and crisp. So your canvas is basically a giant blank canvas and your frames are essentially the areas in which you're going to be working on. But that doesn't mean you can't work on the canvas directly. As you can see, some of these groups up here are just sitting on the canvas and not uh, within a frame. However, typically most of the time, you're probably gonna be working within frames. Cool, so this is the interface of Figma. I believe I've covered everything here uh, and things should be exactly where you'd expect it. Tools in your toolbar up top, layers on the left, information and modification stuff on the right, and your canvas smack in the middle. So over the next course, we're gonna be diving into all of Figma's main features. We're gonna be creating some real web application designs here. I'm gonna be showing you everything you need to know in terms of where things are, or if you're coming from Illustrator or Sketch, you know, the stuff that you'd be used to existing in those applications, where they are in Figma, because like I said, things are the same, but they're a little bit different. And a lot of the times you're going to really like how they're different. If you would like to get this entire series, Master Figma, become the master of Figma, uh, you wanna head to store.leveluptutorials and purchase this entire series or become a Level Up Pro. As a Level Up Pro, you get access to stream all of the content on the site. And there's a whole bunch of free exclusive series and there's gonna be more exclusive series every single month on all sorts of design and development topics. So as always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.